Have you ever read a novel and you were completely engrossed only to be completely blindsided by an unexpected turn in the story? Or maybe you felt your heart racing as the protagonist's emotional world came crashing down? Well, today we're going to talk about uh, twists within the plot and also a pinch of the heart writing techniques that captivate readers. Uh, if you follow this channel and you know about the 27 chapter outline, also known as the 27 plot point outline, you will know there are several plot points that involve a twist or a pinch. You can choose either one in those spots. So today we're going to actually go over the difference between a twist and a pinch in the story. Why is that important, Thomas? Well, you know, understanding the difference between plot twists and pinches uh, and knowing how to effectively implement them can transform your writing from predictable to unforgettable, uh, keeping your readers on the edge of their seats. All right. But more importantly, before we get into the deep of it, what is a plot twist versus a pinch? Well, a plot twist, okay? Uh, think of it this way. A plot twist is a sudden, unexpected change in the storyline that fundamentally alters the narrative's direction. A pinch, however, on the other hand, is an emotional jolt that pushes characters to new depths, enhancing character development and thematic exploration. I'll uh, repeat that again. A plot twist is a sudden, unexpected change in the storyline that fundamentally alters the narrative's direction, whereas a pinch uh, is an emotional jolt that pushes characters to new depths, enhancing character development and thematic exploration. Now, before I give you some examples through a walkthrough, I like to always uh, throw in some tips and tricks for you to think about while we go over the walkthrough. Uh, the first being uh, different, di differentiating between the plot twist and the pinches. Now, the short of it you know, uh, creating twists, uh, you want to not only uh, surprise, but also uh, allow the inevitable uh, to be a reflection. You know, uh, they should arise logically from the story's context, adding depth and complexity to the plot when it comes to creating your twists. Now, when employing the pinches, uh, however... Um, this is where the emotional tension of the narrative will heighten the stakes. Uh, these should challenge a protagonist's emotional or moral fiber, contributing to their arc and pushing them toward critical decisions. You know, ultimately, a twist is external, whereas a plot is in uh, uh, a plot twist is external, whereas a pinch is internal. Now, the long of it, if we're going to really like break it down. You know, you want to design plot twists that are surprising to the reader, but make sense within the story's context once it is revealed. It doesn't necessarily have to be a dun dun dun, but it does have to go. Oh, it makes sense. Uh, this is logical. This requires careful foreshadowing that doesn't give away the twists prematurely, but makes it feel inevitable in retrospect. However, you know, this also will change the inevitable direction of your original narrative because it twisted the plot. So you want to ensure that the plot twist itself significantly changes the course of the story, opening new paths and possibilities for the narrative and characters. It should ultimately raise the stakes or alter the goals and motivations of the characters. Again, I will give examples of these. More importantly, when it comes to emotional resonance, you got to focus on creating moments that push characters to emotional extremes. These moments should test characters' beliefs, uh, commitments, their positions, or the capacities and, uh, you know, the significance of their growth, you know. Um, but more importantly, when using pinches, not just don't use them just for the sake of drama, but to deepen character arcs. They should reveal new facets of a character or force them to confront aspects of themselves that they have avoided. More importantly, positions are challenged. Number two, crafting effective plot twists. Now, the short of it, it's all about subtly laying the groundwork for plot twists to ensure they do not feel arbitrary. This can evolve. Okay. Uh, planting, uh, not evolve, like to evolve, but uh, involve so this can involve 
planting clues that make the twist seem surprising, yet logical in hindsight. It also ensures that your plot twist significantly impacts the story's direction, testing characters and altering reader expectations. So to look a little deeper into what crafting effective plot twists looks like, let's talk about the long of it. I talk about seeding often. Now, seed, you got to go back and seed subtle clues throughout the narrative that seem uh, that don't seem particularly important initially, but later contribute to the aha moment when the twist is revealed. This enhances the twists credibility and enriches the reader's experience. Uh, so, you know, basically, I'm not saying foreshadow things uh, in this instance. Uh, however, you can foreshadow the reveal, but seeding just allows for the logical uh, um, uh, value to be earned of a twist. You know, you like, you got to add, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Fogarty uh, before, uh, you know, Scooby Doo and his people reveal that the ghost was always Mr. Fogarty. Like, you, you know, you can't just be like, who's Mr. F you know, out of nowhere, Mr. Fogarty exists. Uh, but you also want to balance the transparency of everything. You know, there's a, there is, when it comes to foreshadowing, you do want to strike the balance between the foreshadowing itself uh, in a way that doesn't necessarily telegraph the twist to, obviously, but also you want to keep it subtle enough to maintain surprise, yet sufficient to avoid the twist feeling like a uh, contrivance you know you don't want it to be like uh, that was done for they just did that to do that you know also think about the consequences of the plot twist because they should have a clear impactful consequence for the storyline and the characters in themselves it should necessitate new decisions create conflicts or resolve them in unexpected ways uh, where it also challenges your character's positions. But ultimately, the twist should feel like a natural, uh, a, a natural evolving surprise that progresses the story and not just a shock and awe. Even when you shock and awe, you want it to have purpose, right? So it should be integrated seamlessly with the established elements of the plot and characters, reinforcing the story's themes and enriching the narrative. Well, let's talk about uh, implementing powerful pinches. Now, the short of it, align pinches with character weaknesses or fears, or in a way, challenge their positions. This maximizes their impact, forcing characters to confront internal conflicts or evolve. Strategically placing pinches to maintain narrative momentum, using them to propel the story into new emotional territories or act as turning points will help establish, establish a strong emotional resonance with your readers. Yum, 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 yum. But the long of it, you want to design the pinches that target characters' weaknesses, fears, and unresolved issues so you can see the drama unfold. Remember, conflict, stakes, tension, all that is what pulls a reader through a story. There's a big difference between listening to someone, a character going, you know, I've always liked Pepsi. Pepsi's very good. Uh, you know, uh, especially Diet Cherry Pepsi. Uh, I like Pepsi. Uh, Verse them talking about the emotional connection to the Diet Cherry Pepsi. And it's like, you know, I've always, uh, I always liked Diet Cherry Pepsi. Uh, I remember when uh, my brother would, uh, would come home with it. You know, because it was affordable. You know, we lived kind of poor, and it was just nice that, uh, you know, you had something to drink other than water. Because, you know, you get a little little bad with water. But ultimately, uh, it's one of those little things that help you remember it. You know, ever since I lost him, uh, it's become sort of uh, cathartic. There's tension there. There is conflict there because it's a story of loss and it slowly gets revealed, right? So that's why emotional impact is more important. That's why you want tension. That's why you want conflict. That's why you want stakes. So when you deal with pinches that influence the internal, you want to make sure you're attacking something, or I should say targeting something, such as a weakness, a fear, or an unresolved issue like dealing with grief, right? Um which also indicates challenging the positions of what characters believe or refuse to uh, deal with, you know. 
And the reason is because this will make the pinch more impactful and personal, pushing characters toward necessary emotional evolution or resolution. Uh, you know, but also you want it to be relevant to the story. You know, <laughs> don't have pinches just be like, eh, that was interesting. You want it to be relevant to the stories, broader themes, and the arcs of not only the plot, but maybe the character, okay? In some way, some form, some fashion. It should always serve purpose. Remember, everything on the page needs to serve a purpose uh, beyond merely adding tension, such as, you know, if it, it develops the character, it's good. And that's something you got to you got to really focus on, you know, uh, in in screenwriting. OK, not this. I'm talking about novels, but in screenwriting, there's a rule. Uh, every line costs money. Every page costs money. Every eighth of a page costs money. So when you're all writing out action beats or dialogue, you know, cutting out the fluff is good because you're saving budget. Right. Think of the novel's budget as your word count. Your word count is ultimately your budget. And every time you have to write something or add something to the page, you're spending your budget, your proverbial proverbial budget, which in this case is your word count. If you're looking to do a 90,000 word book, every, if everything has purpose, there's no fluff. And that becomes a strong book. Some people think fluff adds to a book. Uh, you know, this is an opinion. Uh, I personally don't think it adds anything to the book because if it's just there to be there, is it adding to the world? Is it adding to the characters? Is it adding to the plot? Remember, those are three important elements. One or more of those three elements should always be on the page within the sentences, the prose, etc., which is plot, character development, or world building. Description for description's sake, it looks pretty. But if it's not doing anything, it's just costing you word budget. So even when it comes to pinches, when you're dealing with weaknesses or fears or tensions or even positions, uh, you want to make sure it's relevant to the story. You want to make sure that it's relevant, relevant to pushing the plot forward, developing the, uh, the characters by moving their arcs and, of course, world building. Now, the additional element to this is that you want to make sure that it the pinch is placed at pivotal moments in the story to maintain momentum or to change a narrative's pace. This is why we use the 27 chapter outline, also known as the 27 uh, plot point outline. Um, this will help you uh, maintain that rhythm of pace within the narrative itself. But more importantly, uh, you know, you want to time your pinches to maximize the emotional impact. Consider the emotional journey you want your readers and characters to take. Pinches should escalate those emotions to new heights. So sometimes you have to really build a relationship with your reader before you just start pinching stuff. All right. More importantly, to finally, number four, uh, the last tip before we get into the, the walkthrough. You want to choosing between a twist and a pinch, you know, because sometimes your story requires a pinch, sometimes a twist, sometimes maybe it's a twist and then a pinch, maybe sometimes it's a pinch and then a twist. But the short of it is you want to assess whether your story needs a major shakeup in the plot or a deepening of character arcs. Choose a plot twist for the former and a pinch for the latter. You know, consider what your audience expects and what would most satisfyingly defy those expectations while staying true to the story. Before I get into the long of it, something that I like to do is I think about what is expected. And then I try to say to myself, well, how do I subvert that? Because what helps add elements to your voice, like value and strength, is the way you approach storytelling. Are you hitting the beats to the known? Or are you playing with the known to create the unknown in a way that makes logical sense? You know, there is a difference between like just going, let me shake it up with crazy stuff just to shake it up. But if it's not making logical sense in your narrative, it might not necessarily be a strong choice. Um, with that said, uh, you, you should be thinking. You should be thinking about the value of your story as a whole. Right. And. 
this is why the long of it suggests that you know you want to consider consider what your story most lacks or needs to progress effectively if your plot feels too predictable a twist might be necessary to rejuvenate the reader interest if your character's journey seems flat or unconvincing a pinch could provide a needed depth so the thing is, if your story's starting to feel stale, but you're like, I love everything that came up to this, sometimes, as Stephen King says, throw a monster in the corner of the room. That's a twist, right? But the pinches uh, toss the character into a moral situation, right? And now they, that start, creates a, a, a divisive uh, element, all right? And again, I'm going to give examples very shortly. So um, the other thing is the long, the long uh, term impact of a pinch or a twist and how it influences your narrative. This is something you should be thinking about. So reflect on that. Think about how that impact uh, not only will be introduced, but how it will influence the overall story and contributes to the narrative, uh, both with the development of your narrative and also the emotional impact. Uh, and finally, the expectations versus satisfaction. You know, consider your genre and the reader expectations. Uh, you know, mysteries and thrillers often benefit from twists, while dramas might be more effective with emotional pinches. However, that doesn't mean that is the be all end all rule. It really comes down to your choice. You are the creative uh, god in writing. Uh, you know, ultimately, you are the hand of God or the hand of the goddess. Uh, that reaches down and manipulates your characters, uh, even when they're talking to you. So with those uh, tips, before we jump into the walk, remember, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. All right. Boom. An example of a plot twist. All right. So uh, I'm not really, there's nothing to show on the screen because I'm not going to work out anything, but I'm going to talk about some plot twists and uh, an example of a pinch. So one famous example of a plot twist can be found in the novel uh, Gone Girl uh, by Gillian Flynn. Now, keep in mind, this was also turned into a movie. There were slight, slight adjustments to the movie from the book, as always, with an adaptation. Remember, all adaptations are basically fan fiction. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, fanfic, you know, so, like I tell people, I go Game of Thrones. The last couple seasons is all fanfic. It's, it's all fans writing what they think Game of Thrones would be because those books don't exist, you know. But anyway, so Gone Girl. In the story, Nick Dunn's wife, Amy, disappears on their fifth wedding anniversary and Nick becomes the prime suspect in her disappearance. Spoiler alert. I am moving forward with the reveal. The narrative is told from both Nick's perspective and Amy's diary entries, painting a picture of a troubled marriage and suggesting that Nick may have had a role in Amy's vanishing. The major plot twist. It's coming. The major plot twist occurs uh, when it's revealed that Amy is actually alive and has been manipulating the situation all along. She staged her own disappearance and framed Nick for her murder as revenge for his infidelity and perceived wrongdoings in their marriage. Now, this revelation completely changes the reader's understanding of the characters, their motivations, and the events that have transpired. It also shifts the direction of the story as Nick must now fight to clear his name and expose Amy's deception while well, Amy helps to manipulate the situation from beyond, behind the scenes. This is the other thing that's important to know. Before it's revealed that she faked her death, the reader is now establishing a uh, perception. They're establishing a biased, a bias towards the character because they assume what they are reading is real. But it's a, a unreliable narrator because it's really Amy uh, manipulating the situation. And then when it switches to Amy, it's like, who do I root for? Because he did have infidelity. He did uh, uh, his actions were, you know, he, he had, he, outside the marriage, right? Um, but you know, she does go to some extremes, and if you haven't seen it, she kills people. Right. So, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of moral amb ambiguity, 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 ambi dyslexia, mouths, <laughs> they all get in the way. Um, but but I will say what's nice about that twist, it does also change the fundamental 
uh, experience of the narrative. The narrative has been twisted so much that the brain is now trying to make sense of it. And now it's sort of like an interesting thriller. Now, but ultimately, this plot twist was a significant factor in the novel's success as it caught readers by surprise and added a new layer of complexity to the characters and their relationships. This twist also served to keep readers engaged and eager to discover how the story would unfold. It wasn't a twist to be a twist that had relevance, all right, uh, with both the character's growth and alteration to how we perceive and also how the story uh, really suggested the moral. Um, uh, that's the thing. It challenges uh, the morals of the characters, which is their positions. And it challenges our morals to kind of look at who is truly the victim and who is, uh, you know, the, honestly, they're both victims and they're both pretty messed up characters. Example of a pinch. Sorry. <sighs> A pinch can be found in the first book of Harry Potter series, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's, Philosopher's Stone, or Sorcerer's Stone in the U.S. by a uh, guru. All right. In the novel, Harry and his friends Ron and Hermione discover that the Philosopher's Stone, a powerful magical object uh, that grants immortality, is hidden within Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. This uh oh they suspect that one of the professors uh severus snape uh always always is trying to steal the stone for the dark wizard lord voldemort uh the name uh, you shall not say his name you know a pinch occurs when harry ron and hermione are caught out of bed at night by professor mcgongal and receive detention as punishment during the, the detention they have to help Hagrid, the school groundskeeper, search for an injured unicorn in the Forbidden Forest. This experience is emotionally challenging for the characters, especially Harry, who comes face to face with a hooded figure drinking the unicorn's blood, which he later learns is a sign of Voldemort's presence. This pinch serves several purposes. It increases the emotional tension and fear for the characters, particularly Harry, who begins to understand the real danger posed by Voldemort. Two, it foreshadows the final confrontation with Voldemort and raises the stakes of the story. And three, it strengthens the bond between the three friends as they face this challenge together, setting the stage for their future adventures. Well, this pinch is not a major twist in the story. It serves to increase the tension, develop characters emotionally, and remind the reader of the central conflict. So I hope those two examples helped. Uh, if you'd like more examples, eh, please let me know in the uh, the bottom uh, the comments. If I get enough uh, comments about it, uh, maybe I'll write uh, some helpful sheets. Maybe I'll even write some sheets just to do it. I'll write some sheets uh, with examples of plot twists and pinches. Uh, you'll have to give me some time, though, and I'll take care of that, and it'll be in the PDF folder. Anyway, question. Think, your fav think of your favorite book with a plot twist or an emotional pinch, and how did it change your perception of the story or characters? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you found this video helpful and uh, or you like what you've been seeing but you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. And, of course, uh, liking and sharing is always a pleasure and a grateful. So final thoughts on the concept of pinches and uh, twists and et cetera, et cetera. Understanding uh, and effectively using plot twists and pinches are crucial for crafting compelling narratives. These elements serve as vital tools in your storytelling arsenal, allowing you to manipulate the structure of your narrative to ensure suspense, develop characters, and engage your audience deeply. By mastering these techniques, you transform from a storyteller into a master craftsman, craftsperson, whatever, uh, shaping your narrative to elicit specific emotional res uh, responses and keep readers invested in the overall path of the arcs. Each plot twist and pinch should employ be employed with clear intent. They are not merely decorative tools to create superficial excitement or drama. Purpose 
purpose purpose. Instead, they should serve a strategic purpose in driving your narrative forward, deepening character development in a way that also enriches thematic exploration. Because every twist and every emotional plot uh, pinch, I should say, should weave seamlessly into the fabric of your narrative, adding layers of complexity and richness. Balancing plot twists and pinches within your narrative ensures that your story maintains a coherent and cohesive flow. Remember, a narrative is made up of plot and story. Plot is what needs to happen. That's the generic boring stuff. Somebody needs to meet somebody. Somebody needs to go here. Somebody needs to discover X, Y, Z. But story is how the narrative unfolds through the emotional filter of your characters. That's the experience of your narrative. So with that said, integrating these elements into the narrative, uh, you want to do so in a way that makes them feel natural uh, and allows the story to unfold and progress rather than forced insurrections, okay? Uh, or I should say insertions. Uh, this integration helps maintain the believability of your world and adds confidence to your writing. Always consider the reader's experience when implementing plot twists and pinches. However, I wouldn't say always write to what the audience wants because sometimes the audience doesn't know what they want until they see it in front of them. Nobody thought Titanic would make the money they, they were going to make, including the studios. And even audiences was like, what is this, a, a movie about a boat? And then... And it's three hours long? Well, clearly, people liked it. And there's a reason for that. There was something more going on than a story about a boat, right? And your goal, ultimately, is to craft a narrative that is engaging and memorable because you are putting purpose behind every moment, be it a plot twist or a pinch. And they should resonate emotionally, connecting readers more deeply to the characters and their struggles through the design of what you would like to tell a narrative of. And you want to strive to leave your audience with a sense of satisfaction and contemplation, provoking thought and emotional response long after the turn uh, of the last page. Sometimes it's nice to uh, be thinking about stuff that you read in a book. But ultimately... As you start writing your book, you'll know if your pinch or twist is really connecting through utilizing your alpha and beta readers. I'm sure your editors will help you and the writing groups to refine the use of the plot twists and pinch. ASM, right? What is it? ASR? AS, A -A -R -A -R? Oh. <laughs> uh, finally, feedback can uh, help you gauge the effectiveness of these elements and offer insight that you might not have seen because you are biased to the writing, only because you have an emotional and complete understanding of what is presented on the page. You're not learning things or discovering things. You already know things. So that's always good. But as with all aspects of writing, the effective use of plot twists and pinches come with practice and ongoing learning. So continue to study well-crafted narratives that utilize these techniques so you can see them unfold and then try to connect the dots and also experiment with different types of plot twists and pinches in your own writing to discover what resonates best with your narrative uh, and the uh, writer's voice uh, with your thematic goals as well. I would also suggest don't just uh, practice when you write practice to practice next video in this series per uh, personification giving human characteristics to non-human things uh this is a very this one it comes with purple prose and uh, just fun ways to really bring life uh to elements um sort of like i'm reading uh i'm working on uh i'm doing some developmental learning for a friend's book and they have this moment where they talk about a storm uh, scraped angrily, you know, and you, you would think, oh, yeah, all right. But uh, the reason that's such a strong way of presenting it, even though it's an L-Y word, is because the storm is doing an emotional thing. It's not just scraping, it's scraping angrily. It creates uh, almost a uh, an element of humanity to the storm, as if the storm is making a choice emotionally. So it's like little things like that. So we'll, we'll go over that. Anyway. All right. 
that's it. That's the video. So, uh, as always, peace and harmony, truth and action, and keep developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. Bye.